So we are bringing on our next guest, and uh, that is the journalist Kevin Gastola to tell us the latest on Julian Assange. Welcome, Kevin. Hey, it's good to see you, Katie. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming back. And you are a tireless uh, reporter on this issue in uh, especially. So please tell us what the latest is with Julian Assange, because there is a big decision made today. Yeah, the latest decision is that Julian Assange was granted a few grounds of appeal, only what I say, two and a half. There were nine grounds of appeal that they asked for. Um, I can get into why I say two and a half if you're interested, but uh, there were six grounds that were denied. And then uh, they said they're not going to consider the evidence related to the CIA allegedly plotting to kidnap or kill him. And after that they- Yeah, I know. Why bother with that? Uh, And then they basically wrote in one single paragraph all the words that the U.S. government needs to say to them in order to extradite Julian Assange. Uh, So what they were particularly concerned about was the fact that uh, Julian Assange might face the death penalty if he's extradited to the United States. Uh, There were no assurances uh, given before, and uh, this came up in the hearing in February, and the uh, attorneys representing the U.S. government, when questioned by the high court judges, had no good response. You know, they actually said, uh, "We don't know that he wouldn't be exposed to uh, a death sentence uh, because it is possible that the prosecutors could add charges to the case against him. They might choose the U.S. government might choose to." Uh, say he was aiding and abetting treason. They might say that he was a spy for a country and add a charge of espionage. Not the espionage. I know we have espionage act charges, but uh, people should understand that under the Espionage Act, that doesn't act, that doesn't always criminalize just being a spy for a country. So, well, if they were going to tack on a charge like that, he might face the death penalty. And then there is this issue of the fact that. This prosecutor in the case, Gordon Cromberg, straight up told the court that Julian Assange may not have First Amendment rights if he was being prosecuted or or, or while he was on trial in the United States. And that was a concern to the judges. So they basically said, hey, do all of these things. Say this to us. Assure us that his rights won't be violated. And then you can have your extradition. So basically feeding them the talking points that they need to regurgitate in order for it, England to say, yeah, he can be extradited. Yeah, essentially. I mean, this already happened. It, this is a long saga, but to refresh people's memory very quickly, back in 2021, we had the district court say that it would be oppressive for mental health reasons to extradite Julian Assange. And she highlighted her concerns with the way the prison system is in the United States and then it was kicked to this court, the High Court of Justice. And um, upon review, during this review, the U.S. government put forward these assurances through the State Department under uh, Tony Blinken, who we've, we've learned is uh, such a uh, pathetic a gas bag of a shell for um, all kinds of abusive acts. And uh, he basically told the U.K. government that Julian Assange, you know, wouldn't be put in a supermax prison. Uh, he'll get mental health treatment. Oh, if he wants to, he could apply to be transferred to Australia and serve his sentence in his home country. All of these things, though, had loopholes. There were all kinds of ways that you could see that the U.S. would be able to break their promises. I expect that to be the case going forward. On May 20th, there will probably be a hearing and uh, it will be around these so-called assurances, these promises that will be made by the U.S. government about what they'll do for Julian Assange, how they won't violate his rights. His lawyers will challenge again, like they did earlier, and it'll be quite difficult because the U.K. court here has said very clearly that they're going to accept whatever the U.S. government says, and uh, they and they they feel like they have to given the relationship between the UK and the United States. So what can people do? The call to action right now, 
Um, this is what Gabriel Shipton, Julian Assange's brother, is asking. This is what Stella Assange, Julian Assange's wife, is asking. This is what the Assange Defense Committee has asked people to do. If you understand the issues around freedom of the press and the First Amendment and everybody's right to express themselves, uh, they say, go to your congressperson. There is a House resolution. It's House Resolution 934. House Resolution 934. And uh, there's only like six, 15 or 20 members of Congress. Uh, in the House, there are 435 members. So there's a long way to go, and there's a lot that people can do. But this is the vehicle for challenging this extradition because it says in the resolution, if you support freedom of the press, then you must demand that the Justice Department drop the charges against Julian Assange. So it's very simple. It's very easy. House Resolution 934 just as it says right there on your screen. And, uh, you know, anybody who isn't signed on to this, I would have to question whether they do support freedom of the press under the First Amendment of the Constitution. We hear a lot of talk from Republicans about the U.S. government being weaponized under Joe Biden. Well, come on, show up. Ron Johnson and everybody on down, get signed on to this resolution. You hear a lot from progressives um, and, and other Democrats about how Donald Trump could abuse powers. Uh, we don't know if Joe Biden's going to be up to the task for re-election. We might just have another four years of Donald Trump and uh, all these authorities that are being given to the courts to punish and go after journalists have to be alarming. So Democrats, sign on, drop these charges. Let's not give any right-wing presidents more power. Just let me quickly add to this that uh yes as i as, as we had a little bit of an exchange there about the cia uh, this did come up in the case and it might be something that people who watch this are asking themselves about because i know you've covered this part of the assange case and this high court astonishingly said that it didn't matter um they actually the said that they planned to yeah. uh Plan kidnap. Ways to kidnap or kill Assange. Yeah, yeah. They said uh, we already knew about that. They said the district court had already heard evidence and decided that it had nothing to do with going after him in, in this case. It had nothing to do with extradition. Um, it was happening in some other context. Uh, actually, they said that they believed Julian Assange was trying to flee for Russia, and so that's why the U.S. was targeting him. And actually, uh, we're wrong. Uh, we're wrong, and we need to understand that this extradition is actually saving him. Because by extraditing him to the U.S., he's actually protected from the CIA. Uh, they won't be able to kidnap, poison, oh, or assassinate him. And uh, so this is this is actually a service for Julian Assange. So he's been in prison for five years and gone through this. And so he should accept the generosity of this U.S. government. Oh, like and, free witness yeah. protection program. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's in protective custody right. right now in a maximum security prison. It's absurd. But it's all false. Um, and, uh, the, and I'll quickly just wrap by saying that we know that this is not true. Um, his attorney, he has an attorney named Ayator Martinez, who isn't that well known, but a Spanish attorney who has worked on these matters of how he was targeted in the embassy. And Ecuador had turned on Julian Assange. One of the things that happened was there's a bit of a, as I understand it, a kind of rogue official who was basically trying to entrap Julian Assange by giving him a Russian diplomatic passport and saying, you know, go here. If you want to leave the Ecuador embassy, go here. And his team and Assange himself were like, I can't do that. Russiagate is happening in the United right. States. Are, are, this is insane. You mean like after all I've gone, gone through, I'm going to go to Russia and make it even easier for the U.S. government to come after me? He said, no, I want to go to Bolivia or Colombia or Venezuela or a Latin American country willing to challenge the United States, but I'm not going to go to Russia. And uh, they ended up getting it changed. But because UC Global, that Spanish security company working for the U.S. intelligence agencies or CIA, uh, had collected all this information on Julian Assange, they wrote it down and then it made its way into the Yahoo News article. Um, about uh, Russia and made its way, you know, U.S. officials knew about this. So when they talked about the plans against Julian Assange to kidnap and kill him, they mentioned Russia. 
And now it worked its way into the high court decision. And they basically justified all this mistreatment against Julian Assange uh, by saying Russia, Russia, Russia again. And that's, you know, we've seen that for the last seven, eight years now. Uh, Russia is like a get out of jail free card for right. the U.S. Justice Department.